Previously on Brian's Mobile One. I got this sweet Toyota 4Runner for free because I had the truck and trailer and was able to go pick it up when it broke down. We're going to tear it down and find out exactly what failed. Oh, we got metal hanging out. We got glitter and we got chunks. But that's our engine that we're working on is a 3RZFE. So here's the before and here's the after. Brian's Mobile One. On a trip I did with Pennzoil and Penske, uh, we were sitting in the race trailer and we are talking about restrictor plates and uh, fuels and everything about NASCAR. And uh, they were talking about engines being an air pump. And when you think about it, there's a piston in here, this is the cylinder, and they both have to be able to seal and be lubricated and have everything go right in order to pump up tires, right? We know this, this we've used this a lot. This one's from like 1930, it's actually like an antique. Uh, the cylinder wall of this is kind of buggered up and the seal's old so it needs a new piston rings and it needs to be honed basically. When our air pump or engine decided to spit out some bearings and then just eat everything up with this cam balance shaft. <laughs> so when that happened a bunch of metal got everywhere and uh, instead of having these oil ports be oil ports they became glitter ports, glitter and shrapnel ports. When they clog up and things get hot, you get even more bearings not getting oil and then spitting more metal into the system. So these are the rod bearings. This is another example of that. I've seen these in past videos. Uh, these are spun bearings and they just basically didn't get any oil to them and just kind of got catastrophic. If it gets catastrophic, you get all kinds of carbon buildup on everything because it gets too hot. When your air pumps and oven set to broil, it broils the oil. So what we're going to do is all of that carbon that got broiled onto the side of the cylinder wall, these are the cutaways. This is a brand new engine, nice and pokey. Uh, this is the cross hatchings. The high point would be on each side of that. And then this would be the scratches in between at 45 degrees. When you break an engine in, you know, you change your oil after 500 miles, they say run it at so many RPM for so much time and then run it at higher RPM for so much time and so on and so forth, where you're just kind of creeping up on it, you're being real gentle on it, you're taking just a little off, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and then before you know it, it's nice and smooth and your metal contact uh, goes from being a little bit sketch to being pretty smooth and you're pretty much riding on the engine oil. We don't worry about wearing out engine oil. Just drain it out, put in new oil. It works awesome. Seals awesome. It's great. That's what we want to do. In order to get from here to here, we need to make sure that we hone the cylinder. And the main thing is, is this orange stuff is oil, as you see here. You can't pack as much oil into these scratches if the scratches are full of carbon. So we need to get that wiped out of there using some honing. Uh, you can use a ball hone, you can use a, a three stone hone like we're going to do. There's a certain movement that you do and a certain speed with the drill and a certain speed and how you go up and down to accomplish this. But this is what we're looking for. As I said, we want about 45 degrees, 35 degrees. This is too flat. Our piston rings are going to get an opportunity to catch and whatever. You could successfully make this happen, but this works better. It blasts the oil go up or down. It spreads it where it needs to be. If you have a flat spot, bald spot, or something like that, if you're a man, it's not a big deal. You just wear a hat. Uh, in this case, you don't have oil on it. It's just going to burn up again. Nothing more frustrating than rebuilding an engine and then having it fail again right away. Uh, that can happen for a number of reasons. Uh, you can see where the piston ring end gap is. There's one here, and then there's another one right underneath of it. That's bad. That's a leak. Uh, if you have a bunch of gouges in the cylinder wall, same thing. That's a leak. Oil can get by, compression can be lost. You want to make sure when you put your piston rings on, you offset those, uh, or else you're going to have some compression problems or misfire problems if you just did it on one. Uh, you want to make sure that this is cleaned out. This was a free engine. We're not going to go full Ferrari rebuild on this sucker. We're just going to, if you can't feel it with your fingernail, then that's generally good enough. Uh, when you look at this piston here, you can see it's got a little bit of that and I can feel that with my fingernail. This is a really soft material. If you have a hard material and you're being cheap and you just want to get it running again, uh, we're going to let this slide. We'll show you how I use compressed air to blow out all of the different channels and journals. We had all kinds of crap and junk ride through all the oil channels. They were blocked off. Took the engine to the machine shop. They went through and then they did their thing where they got it hot and washed it and did all that kind of stuff. Got most of the carbon off. 
but not the stuff that's really baked on here and not the stuff that's in the oil journals. Normally they do that for me, but this was done during 2020. Owner was sick and COVID and new guys quitting all the time. We could double check everything all the time. Um, there's one other thing that we're going to double check and that is plastic gauge for our clearances. That's going to be a whole separate video all on its own. So let's hop to it. Get her done. First thing we gotta do, put it in an engine stand. Here's how we do that. To use a spacer, you can see that is the spacer that comes with my engine stand, and then there's a nut that I put on over it. These are M12 by 1.25 volts, I believe. These are M14, so the threads aren't making contact, and you can turn them, and no binding or no issue. If you're a professional engine builder, there's better ways of doing this. There's a big machine, it's automated. You basically go have your coffee or eat lunch and let the machine do this. And it does great work of it. And then you just have to switch it and come back every so often. What I've found is this is a variable drill and you'll hear the speed changing a lot as I go like this. It's hard to be consistent. So what I do is flip it around backwards with your ring finger. But I found it's just ergonomic when you're going like that to have it this way as opposed to having it this way. For whatever reason, having my wrist like that and the trigger finger in the traditional way going down is no fun. So I do it this way and see if you can hear a difference. You see I'm moving up and down pretty fast. That's so that I can get those sweet 40 degree cross hatchings. If you go too slow up and down while you're going fast, they're all just going to be flat, zero to 20 degrees, right? And if you go really slow on the drill and go fast like this, they're going to be closer to 60 to 80 degrees. I look at the chuck and try to get the chuck to be in the middle and just get it going uniform and just get a good pace to it. It's not going to be perfect, you know, I'm not a machine. But what it does is it makes for a clean surface and it creates those cross hatchings. If you look closely, you can see there's an accumulation of oil and filings that build up on the side here. You want to make sure that you clean that off every so often. For one, your lubrication's not doing any good anymore. It's picked up its material, it's reduced friction, it's doing its job. But you want to make sure that you wipe these off periodically. This is kind of like cast iron skillet or a Dutch oven and that you don't wash it off or you leave it oil soaked and it works best that way. Um, but you can see that there's a lot of material that's accumulated here. If you leave it on, you are not getting the benefit of the time and the effort that you're putting in. This is working, but it's like anything else, like sandpaper gets clogged. You want to make sure that you clean these and lube them regularly. It's going to drip, do it on cardboard or paper or whatever, but watch that soak into that. I want to make sure that I get this side good. I want to get the ends good on the ends, on this side, and rotate. It doesn't take but a couple of seconds to clean it up and make it nice. Also, I have to wipe out the cylinder because you have the same effect going on in there. So I'll take a rag, wipe around the top, and all of a sudden you'll be able to see your cross hatchings a little better. You'll be able to see your hone lines better. Roll up your sleeves, get down in there, and I'm just kind of pushing it around with my fingertips. On the sides of my hands and gloves, you can see there's an accumulation. Uh, you can flush it with solvent, you can spray your rag and then wipe it out like I do. Uh, just whatever it takes, just get it cleaned out good. Check this out guys. I was blowing it out with compressed air and you see what that is? That's oil. So that's oil that remained in the oil journals on the part that failed which means something was still blocked even though this thing's been through the bath, even been shot through. That shouldn't have any oil left in it at all. That's why we do this. As I go through these, see all the junk coming up? So I take it to the machine shop, they hot solvent to get all the passages clear. Whenever you lose a rod bearing, you always have all kinds of stuff in your oil journals. So it's good to get, make sure it's cleared out, but verify. Trust, but verify, right? Make sure you got good passage. That's what the machine shop already did. We're just verifying that. We just make sure that everything is clear. So I got some blue paper towels stuck from uh, cleaning out the honing residue. Bonus footage at the end. Yeah. Okay. 
Alright. Good luck. Thank you. So, let me close the glass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he's got a camera. So, so when you close the door, is it going to pop somebody out the other side? <laughs> <laughs> Boom. I just heard him pop it. out. He was on fire a second ago, like visible flames as tall as his car. Oh, he's okay. Was that the same car that hit over there? Our car's been hit, the fender sounds like. Right front fender. Yeah, it's damaged in the front. Here's the car we're following. 